All right. Uh, one thing on my channel that is really authentic, or that I should say that, that is really important is authenticity. So look at the board, and I want you to know that there hasn't been another video. Uh, I shot a video last night, and I'm going to explain something about the shadow functions of the INFJ and show it to you. But I want you to realize that uh, I haven't done a video after that one. So between last night and right this second, it's, uh, what, the 27th on Saturday night, like 1120. Um, I needed to wait long enough so that I could show you the difference between the shadow functions of the INFJ and the ENFP. So you can hear the tone, so you can see the difference uh, between the INFJ that you see all the time and then the INTJ or the ENTJ versus the ENFP shadow functions. Or when you see me and you think you understand uh, MBTI and and you clearly don't, and you're calling me out as e ENFP uh, as my primary function, and it's just simply not true. And to be honest with you, I don't give a fuck what you think. But what's really deal with this light? I have all these lights on. Let's try that a little better. Okay. Um, but I, I, you know what? Let's do this. Here, I'll change the color on that one. There we go. And I'll do that. Yeah, that's good. I don't fucking know. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, and you don't. So I'm really trying my best to um, explain to you and show you. Instead of just telling you to go get fucked all the time, it's not working. <laughs> why, would that, why, why in my infinite wisdom would I think that would work? <laughs> that's a good that's a good one okay all right um so so buttons on your underwear <laughs> all right i'm going to explain to you a couple of things that happened to me over the last 48 hours and it, it's heartbreaking man it really is women do you do you not know that you're really hurting man <laughs> you really really are and and you don't you don't realize it um, you know, it's the chicken or the egg. So I'm going to go over a couple things. And like, for example, there's this local place I used to go. And uh, I'm not going to mention it by name because I don't need to promote it. And second of all, uh, I don't need law enforcement to be following me around any more than either they already are or if they backed off on me, I don't need them following me around. So I'm not going to say the name. But it's a the people that own it uh you know there's um employees men and women and one of the women uh it's a wife and i used to talk to her all the time and actually i think we got pretty close but something happened in the relationship where i was going to work with her husband on something business related and i was asking her about you know, how to go about the money side of it, because I, what I didn't like is they, they didn't bring the family friendship into it. They wanted it all business. And I was getting uh, confused on, are you my friend? Or is this a business venture? Because you, you want me to have like this budget to do some computer design and other work that I could do myself, or I could just talk to you for a little bit steal all your secrets and then do it myself. But instead, what I want to do is I want to work with you, but I'm not coming in. I'm not paying your rent. You know, I just, it, if you're INFJ, maybe you understand this. You'll enter into relationships and you'll be like, no, I, I'll pay you. I'll empty my bank account. Okay, this is how it works. I'll empty my bank account for you over time, but I want you to prove to me, to show me that you're willing to work for free for me because I'm willing to work for free for you. The inverse or the, or the opposite relationship of that is if you come in and tell me a quote for a dollar, I'll end up paying you a million because you become my friend and I don't have any friends. If that, yeah, I mean, if you're INFJ, you get in your, that's a trap for the INFJ in the, in, in the entrepreneurship. The INFJ and the entrepreneur do not fucking belong together. I've done videos on it. Okay. All right. But, a lot of INFJs find themselves as entrepreneurs or, and, and I hate that fucking word, you millennial fucking pricks just destroyed that word. You don't even know what the fucking word means. 
Like, 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 for example, you, uh, I'll, I'll see people on TikTok or on fucking Instagram. What, what's your profession? I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, get the fuck out of here with that. I was in the, I was in the goddamn magazine. I was in entrepreneur magazine. Jesus fucking Christ. All right. So with that being said, <laughs> yeah, fucking you're, <laughs> so with that being said, she, I was on the phone with her one time. This goes back like during COVID or maybe even pre COVID 21, 20, 21, 22, maybe 2021. 20, I don't know. And she was on the phone with her and she said to me the fucking worst thing you could ever say to me in business. Well, your corporation, you must have some sort of design and graphics budget. Oh, she said that and it was door slam. It was the kiss of death. I don't think I spoke to her or even for a year and a half. I'm not kidding. So fast forward to about a year ago. And this is no joke. And I think tonight I was there. She wouldn't even look at me. The last time I was there, uh, last night, I stopped in. And the only reason why I'm stopping in is to apologize for the umpteenth time to this woman. I have apologized and explained to her everything I'm going through with regards to this case, with regards to other personal things, and nothing matters. So women... When a man or when you are scorned, I would like to explain to you what you're doing to the men around you. Men aren't that way. Men don't have that capability. They, they just don't. But when you scorn a woman, when you upset a woman, she never, sur never surrenders, never forgives. And... The brutality of the payback. So, so tonight, so last night, I'm sitting, I'm standing in front of the husband, and I said, I have apologized. I said, I don't know what else to do. I said, Can you help me? And, and he unloads on me. He goes, You've got me. Forget about her. You've got me. She's going through a lot of shit. You've got me. And what it really felt like is it really felt like he was irritated or had become irritated that here's a grown ass man letting me directly know that he's upset by my wife's actions on him. Well, newsflash, motherfucker. Yes, because you and your fucking wife should have at some point in time said, A, we don't want you ever back. She should have come up to me and taken the fucking vagina off of her that she thinks she wore, pulled her fucking cock out and balls down out of her fucking body and said, Marty, I don't want you here anymore. I would say, okay, fair enough. Sorry that I hurt your feelings. Have a wonderful, happy, healthy life. I wish you nothing but the best. None of that ever happened. None of that ever happened. So last night I said to him, after he said, you know, you've got me. I said, okay, thank you for telling me. I, I won't address it again. I won't let you know that your wife's actions toward me are hurting my feelings. I won't say another word because I know everything about what's going on right now. Everything. And guess what? I'm not the fucking problem. You and your wife are the goddamn fucking problem. So I have spent, wait for the, wait till you hear how this goes. So I went tonight and I, because last night he said, there's a great band that's coming. So you got to come. So I did. I went, dropped $40 by myself, plus a hundred on the band, tipped the band a hundred bucks. They were fantastic. Five member band. They were absolutely probably the best band I've ever seen at that facility, bar none. They were outstanding dropped 140 bucks she never looked at me not one time i tried and what i couldn't understand every time she walked by me is 
does she even does she even care how much she's hurting my feelings that I, I want to say sorry I've said sorry I have said sorry not less than five times please tell me what I did wrong she won't So guess what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to email her husband and I'm going to say, I think the world of the two of you. Is that a lie? It's a straight up fucking lie. But I'm going to say that. But the reality is, I don't fucking give a shit whether you are alive or dead because you have shown me nothing but fucking dishonor, disrespect, and just a lack of humility or humanity. The both of you fucking suck. But I'm going to say in an email, I think the world of you, but I can no longer come to your establishment and take the continued punishment from your wife. I said I was sorry. I even came to you to the point where I said I was sorry, and you actually, as a man, got irritated or some emotion because another man was caring about the way your wife was treating him. Well, fuck yes, I do. So get your self-esteem out of the fucking gutter, put it back somewhere inside your fucking body and understand that I have a heart that I that I cared I'm never coming back more than likely you'll never see or talk to me again have a wonderful happy healthy life I did my best I tried but I can't do it again goodbye Marty Do you, do, you, do you have any idea what it takes to do that? The pain. And, and, do you know, and do you know after it's done, you would think that I know it is, it, I'm not even going to waste my time drawing it. It is this graph of pain and it just goes hockey stick. Well, fuck it, I'll do it. The pain of an INFJ, door slam, door slam, pain. INFJ door slam. Looks like this, people. And and again, and if you don't and if you don't know what I'm fucking talking about, you're not fucking I have You just just not get the fuck off my channel and go do something else. God fuck. This is what it looks like. This is the effort. As the door slam nears, and it's just a, a all, all, all hands on deck. Fucking heartache. And then door slam but watch the next line that's the pain and it it is it's not it's it's not like a breakup pain it's the, the what the what the pain is 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 it's the pain of knowing that if I could have just, it's the self pain. If I just could have got you to listen to me, what a fucking relationship we would have had. And I know that I would change your life. I know I would change your life. Not you change mine. I change yours. You don't fucking matter. I picked you. I chose you. I brought you in, not the other way fucking around, you arrogant fucking piece of shit. And that pain dissolves over an incredible amount of time. And then one day, it's gone. But that journey is every second of every day. And this is what I'm going through with a woman that is the wife of of, a, of, a, of, of, of an individual that is at a local business. 
And that and, and it is fucking painful. I will write that email tonight. And I am right here. And I am. So that's one woman. And by the way, as far as the, the information as far as the information goes with the with the man, you know, he doesn't he because of the way that he did it, he doesn't get the 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 respect of 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 bros before hoes. You know, you got my back, you know, you keep coming in. No, 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 not on this one. No, no, no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, your your wife, your wife and your attitude, like I can't be upset that I care for your wife and your wife cares for me, and I did something, and there's like this side relationship. There's no fucking side relationship. This is a goddamn woman who stepped over the line, who doesn't know her fucking place, and now it's a shit show, and it's over. It's fucking over. The only thing I can tell you is, I'm glad I got to come on one of the greatest bands I've ever seen you play there. You were right. They were just fucking awesome. 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 Worth every penny I tipped them. They deserved it. Deserved it. So, with regards to uh, the last 48 hours of my life. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to draw a bar. So you get the idea. Um, there's going to be two different situations here. This is seating. Okay. All right. I was here. Just by myself. And, uh, there was girl, G1, G2. Okay. Before I just before I tell you about this, I need to tell you about the uh, the INFJ. INFJ in chameleon. They spell chameleon? I think it is. All right. The INFJ in chameleon, not when the INFJ goes chameleon. When the INFJ is in chameleon and becomes extroverted. This is almost out of body. When the INFJ needs to perform or do something in an extroverted manner, normally it is out to set a goal. It is out to accomplish something. It is not to prove anything to anyone, even to self. It's, it's on its, its reason. It's on a mission. It's on a task. It's trying to solve something. It's trying to fix something. Or it's trying to save something. There is a reason for why the INFJ is going extrover extroverted. And that is why it is almost an out-of-body experience. When the INFJ goes into chameleon and becomes in chameleon as an extrovert, it's also drawing attention from others. So when the INFJ goes into chameleon as an extrovert and is out on a mission to solve some internal uh, introverted intuition, it's needing to solve something inside through either a task, solving um, um, by, by entering into chameleon 
and going extroverted to talk and or combine people, events, or things to fix, save self or another person. The INFJ does not go into chameleon just because. It is for a reason. That reason is extremely important to the INFJ. Very. You could almost call it life or death because the INFJ, as a judging, introverted, intuitive person, depending on your level of INFJ, and remember, there's different levels. Well, you're going to find out what level I go to with regards to the INFJ going into chameleon. So I'm at this bar and I'm sitting by myself right there all night. And I'm not talking to anybody. If anyone talks to me, I kind of blow them off. And one thing I've learned is an INFJ alone at a bar, sitting at the bar, that's not where the INFJ needs to be. That's like going into a whorehouse and, and ridiculing and blaming and, and calling all the fucking girls in there ugly sluts with no fucking honor or self-respect. No, you're out of place. You're the dick. That's the same as me as an INFJ introverted soul going to a bar and saying, I don't want to talk to anybody. And believe it or not, I just started to figure that out. I'm the problem. In fact, I'm just, I'm just point blank the whole fucking problem. And I'm just starting to realize that at 53. Sincerely, I am the fucking problem. And I'll tell you what that means in a bit. So I'm sitting there and there's two girls here. This girl has her back to me, blonde hair, and this girl, this girl's a brunette. All right. So throughout the night, I'm looking and I can see that girl. The whole night, I'm thinking to myself, I don't care, but I want to care. I really don't. I know how it's going to go. But maybe this time will be different. I want it to be different, but I know it's not. You're still, and, I, and I'm like, I'm still thinking about my past relationships and wondering what went wrong there. What business do I have going up to her? Well, I'm talking to the bartender. And I like him. He likes me. He's a nice guy. And I said, wedding ring. He goes, no, but I can still see the tan line. I said, you can. Wow. And I said to him, there's two types of women. Women who cheat, keep their ring on. Women who cheat, take their ring off. Which one do you want to cheat with? He's like, the one who takes the ring off. I said, no, you're wrong. You want the one that still has the honor and self-respect to keep that ring on. That's the one you want. If you're going to go down that road, that's the one you want. So am I sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, all right, I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to go out of my way. So what I do is I walk by, and this is way late in the night. This is like half hour later after having a conversation. Go to the bathroom. The bathroom's over here. Okay? And I come back, and I tell them some, something like, hi, whatever, your name. And, uh, oh, I know what it was. I walked up to girl number two. I didn't even address girl number one. And I said something to her about, hello, whatever. The other girl here, girl number one, gets offended that I did not say, hi, what's your name? What's your name? I looked at her and said, I don't mean any harm by doing that. Hello, my name is, thanks for introducing yourself. But I wanted to make it clear that between the two of you, this is the one that I wanted to talk to. She goes, oh, I can respect that. I said, well, she's got brown hair, you have blonde hair. And well, for tonight, that's just how it went. She goes, oh, I can respect that. I understand that. So she was cool, whatever. Basically, what I did is I said, look, I said, I don't really do this very often. Told her the truth. And I don't know how this goes. But what I'd like to do is I'm going to give you my phone number. Okay. The bartender knows me well enough. If you want to take a chance, text me and say hello. See what happens. Talked for a second. I exited, said, okay, we'll see you later. Have a great night. Very nice pleasure meeting you. Very professional. Very nice. Turns out that was about 10.15 or 11.15 at night. 10.15 it was. 10.45, 
she texted me back. Hi, it's her name. Nice to meet you. And this is what happened. Girl number one. Oh, I'm sorry, girl number two. People aren't that hard to find. And especially if you're, if you're me and you have certain tools, you're really not that hard to find. Turns out she is 40-ish, eight-year-old son, recently separated fourth or first quarter 23. Hence the uh, the line on her finger. You know, it's interesting. When I talked to her, I brought up the comment. I said, you know, the bartender and I were thinking, because I said, I said, the bartender and I had a bet on your ring. And uh, you, uh, he said, you have a stripe where your uh, tan line for your ring. And we, you know, and I, and I said, hey, who, what girl is worse? The girl who cheats on her husband with ring or without? And the girl, in, girl number one chimed in. She goes, no, the girl who takes the ring off. And I said, you have it right. This girl number two, she says, I never took my ring off. And I said, hence the tan line. I said, that makes perfect sense. Very commendable of you. My ex-wife never did either. My ex-wife never didn't have her ring on. It was always on. So... Uh, I gave my phone number to her, and she she texted me at ten fifteen, um, about eleven or eleven thirty. I texted back, and this is how the next day went. I'm just going to write this: ten, ten a.m., eleven a.m., uh, let's say twelve thirty p.m. Uh, let's say one fifteen p.m. And 6.30 p.m. Okay. So I texted her the night before. This was her. This was me. This was her. This was me. And this was me. At 6.30, I texted her and said, first name, it was a pleasure meeting you, but this isn't going to work for me. I said, I know I just met you, and I placed myself at level 10 on your priority list already. But if we just met, if you stared at me all night, and I stared at you all night, and I had the courage to walk up to you, and the decency and the and the mannerisms and the professionalism and the the just the fucking balls, the everything, the personality, self-esteem, to walk up to you and give you my number and say, I'm interested in you. I'm I'm olive branch. I, I'm I'm fucking. And you can't take the time. Level, this is what I said. Your level of engagement and excitement. and excitement on the second day, second day is not good enough. When she texted me after I texted, basically. I wish you the best. I'm not interested in you anymore. She texted me back at 6.40 or 6.45 and said, I was dealing with my son. You're right. I have an eight-year-old boy and uh, I, you know, his work and all these excuses. And she said, I, I was planning on coming home and texting you. I guess I just didn't text you quick enough. And then gave me an emoji like this. Oh, man. I responded back, you did nothing wrong. You're a beautiful girl, beautiful woman. Best of luck to you. You didn't do anything wrong. 
you're one year, one and a half years, maybe two separated. You have an eight-year-old son. You have your own business. You have friends. There was, there, there was, there's no reason for you to feel, and I said this, there's no reason for you to feel bad. None. Have a wonderful, happy life. But I'm sorry, I, I can't do this. And the reason why is because if you took away her smartphone, if you took, and I, and I said this, and I said, I know you've got men in your phone. I said, between work, son, soon to be ex, other men, friends, and we just met and you stared at me. That means that you're missing something in all of this. And you let me know that Marty could potentially be that missing piece. And I engaged you from the moment I met you all the way. And my texts are long. They're INFJ. They're long. They're detailed. They're asking. They're, they're, they're just, they're engaging. They're exciting. And between here and here, a five-hour period of time, and in my last text to her, after she responded, like, I guess I just didn't, I just guess I blew it. I, I wrote her a text. It was fucking this long. All professional, all nice, just explaining myself so her feelings wouldn't be hurt because I dumped her within 24 hours. That had to hurt. Guarantee that I made an impact on that woman. You couldn't take five minutes. And I told her, I said, this text took me five minutes to write. And I own three fucking companies. I'm involved in two different startups. I, <laughs> I'll do a video. <laughs> want to hear something funny? You want to you hear a startup? All right. I want you to put in the comments. Okay? I've been saying this for over a decade. I've been saying this slogan for over 10 years. And two months ago, I bought the domain name. Right in the comments, right now, get a pen, right, get a pen right now, and tell me exactly what you think when I say this to you. <laughs> I own the domain name, just Nike it dot com. If you did not think of success, champions, Tiger Woods, golf, tennis, football, basketball, and more importantly, if you did not hear the word or phrase, just do it, you're fucking lying. And guess what? Guess what? Just Nike it is a phrase that I can own and I'm going to build a clothing line around it. And Nike is going to sue me and I'm going to tell him to go get fucked. You've got nothing, Nike. That big company, I'm going to tell him, fuck yourself. But they, what they really don't understand yet, because I haven't launched it, is how connected just nikeit.com will be to the to the brand to the unofficial to the official brand of nike would you like to know how that's possible nike is the only company on planet earth to ever there is no other there is no other and it's why it took them 15 years of using just do it to get it trademarked because you can't trademark phrases nike cannot patent or trademark what you think when i Pick Nike as a verb and not a noun. You trademark nouns. You cannot trademark a verb. <laughs> Just Nike it. How do you want your day to go? Just Nike it. Having a bad day? Just Nike it. What should I wear today? What kind of pants, shoes? Just Nike it.
Nike is the first company on planet Earth to brand so goddamn fucking well that they far exceeded themselves. And they gave me a window and an opportunity to capitalize on. That is what a fucking entrepreneur is, you millennial stupid fucks. That is an entrepreneur. Not TikTok. Not selling shit on Amazon. That. And guess what? Nike's going to love me. Not hate me. They're going to love me. Super Bowl 2025. Tiger Woods, some fantastic athlete. Red Bull jumping. You heard me right. Red Bull jumping out of a fucking spaceship. When in doubt, fade away. Just Nike it. End of commercial. Are you fucking kidding me? (laughs) I'm leaving it up. I can't. I can't fucking do the behind the. Okay. All right. So with that being said, hey, you like it? <laughs> Tell me in the comments. What did you think? Um, I am batting almost a thousand. Everyone says just do it, and that's exactly what I want. Yeah, just Nike. Okay, so this girl, I, who's the problem? Because when, when I, when she said, you know, I guess I just wasn't quick enough. It's like, no, no, no. You know, let's call her name, let's say her, let's, let's say her name's Dawn. No, Dawn, no. I remember the days when it was so hard to walk up to a girl I remember the days when it was so hard to get a phone number when you got one, you cherished it. And, and, and you just, you, it it just meant so much to you. And you, and you were, and, and I'm, I'm being honest. I, I didn't have any buddy in my phone. I mean, I, I was, I was clean. I wasn't talking to anybody. I, there was no, potential any I mean it was it was that was one of the cleanest introductions with such a heartfelt intent and my feelings got hurt and it is not her fault she did nothing wrong and for the one, two, three, or four, I guarantee this girl has at least two or three men. Uh, she's uh, this. I guarantee this woman is sleeping with one to two men off and on, and has two to four men in her phone. She's that good looking. And 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 I even made comments about her son. I, you know, you look like you have a a, a wonderful soon to be ex husband, a great father. I mean, I saw it, and and a beautiful boy. I mean, I'm not kidding, you know, and a lot of good things going for this person. But I'm sorry, when I've already put myself at level 10, and, and, and the, within the first 24 hours, you place me at level 15. No, 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 no. I'm not going to, I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to abuse you. I'm not going to call you selfish. I'm not going to call you a bitch. Nothing. I'm going to say, you got a lot going on, Don. Take care of it. You know, take care of it. And I wish you nothing but the best. But my self-honor and self-respect and the level of me is number one. And you don't know it. You don't know it. but I'm that guy that would die for you. And you know what?
99.999% of men would. Except on, except the ones you were talking to or the one you left and just didn't even think of me during that whole time. And if you did, you didn't think I was important enough. I walked away because the level of engagement and excitement just wasn't there for you. And you did nothing fucking wrong except show me who you are. That statement doesn't mean you're the problem, you're wrong. It just means the timing was off. And I'm better than that. That was in the last 48 hours. So my heart, my insides are dealing with this because I, I still think about it. I, I can't, I can't reach out to her and fix this. Just like, just like the, the other individual. I, I, I can't fix that man's wife. I, I can't. I can't fix this. And I'm the one who walked away and the pain was right there. And now I'm doing this all the way down. So now I have two I'm dealing with. I am. Not to mention other relationships that I've walked away from. Oh, how many is that? It's another one. Another one. Another one. I'm not kidding. Um, this is a woman. That's a man. That's a man. And these two are the women. This one and the other one I talked about. One, two, three, four. That's five. I have five painful descents of relationship door slams on top of or underneath the GVRO shit I'm dealing with. So let me erase this and uh, come back and uh, do the uh, do the next one because there's another one on top of this. So this next one is a little bit different but the same. And I'll, I will uh, re, uh, redo this. Oh, and, and as far as, you know, going out, There's just no point. Just no point. My problem is I don't want to admit. My problem is twofold. I don't want to admit that I'm okay being home alone. Because it's all a waste of time. And I don't want to admit that I'm going to be exactly like my grandfather. I don't want to die like he did. But I've known since I was seven, eight years old that I would. And, and, and I'm on point. <laughs> It's not skipping a beat. And it makes me really sad. It does. I'll do it differently than he did, but I I so bad want to uh, be in chameleon and, and 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 change. Try. Just really, really try. But it's it's not it's just not going very well. And what's actually happening is I'm I'm realizing that uh, I'm the problem. And when I say that, you sometimes you like you, you think you're not the problem. I'm not the problem. I'm not the problem. But everyone else is so fucked up. And I mean that. So fucked up that that I'm the problem. In, in, and you can't deny that. You, you have to start to realize that if everyone else thinks the same and everyone else gets along and you're having difficulty, you're the fucking problem. Oh, and by the way, by the way, hey, this is a great idea. I thought about this earlier before I did this video, okay? Check this out. This is my email address. M-E, oh, and, and don't fucking spam it, but I don't give a fucking shit, okay? <laughs> you can't, <laughs> okay, you can't fucking hurt me. <laughs> you just can't. This is my email address, M-E at M-A-R-T-Y-G-L-E-N-N 
Facebook.com. I'm going to take this down because it didn't really work, whatever. You want to date me? Send me an email. Don't fuck with me. I'm not, I'm fucking serious. I'm fucking dead serious. You want to watch 500 videos? You think you can fucking handle me, put up with me? Fucking, you want to date me? Fucking send me an email. And don't catfish me. You better be fucking everything because I will check you out. And I will know when you took a fucking piss last. Trust me, I will. That's my fucking email address. And listen, I'm not gay. So if I, <laughs> if I motherfucking, listen, all pictures are private, okay? You can send me whatever the fuck you want. But I swear to my mother, if you are a guy and you send me some fucking cock, I will post your fucking email with those pictures. Do not fucking test me. But otherwise, on my honor and my re fucking uh, my respect, who I am as a man, you send me whatever you fucking want. And you better have your fucking eyes on correctly. Nothing pisses me off more. Nothing. Then in this world, when someone thinks that their outer appearance doesn't matter, it fucking matters to me. So, oh, wait, oh, okay, okay, okay. And let me tell you something. There's how you view yourself, zero to a 10, okay? Do you know where I view myself? Five to eight. I seriously, I do. Because when you visually look at someone, that's all you know. They haven't opened up their mouth yet. Do you know how many women I've had in this area here? And they are the worst fucking lazy pieces of dog shit of fucking flesh I've ever fucking seen. Get the fuck away from me. Now, the greatest one, greatest woman, like they call them unicorns, whatever, you know, the greatest ones are the ones from 13 to 18, fat and fucking ugly, horrible looking. And then, and then something happens around 25 to 35. If that woman actually reaches her prime, 35 to 40, Sign me the fuck up. Oh my God. That is the unicorn. Fucking A. You get your prime, 35 to 40. 25 to 35 is questionable in that period of time. The younger it is to 25, not as good. Closer to 35, but you go up. Oh my God, man. The best of the best of the best. Okay? So if you're a 10 but you think you're a fucking zero and you can't get over it and you just fit, you just fit what I said. Oh, I want to hear from you. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, if you're a guy and you fucking send me cock, I swear to my mother, I will put your email address up and the picture. I will fucking do it. Do not fuck with me like that. That's one thing I do not like about homosexual men. They think that they can turn men. I'm not gay. You can't turn me. I'm not fucking gay. Been through this. I've done videos on it. My whole life has been surrounded and involved and with gay men. I get it. I'm not fucking homosexual. So don't fucking fuck with me. All right? Being 53 years old, the proper age... You see, I've already had two boys. I'm not having children. It would have to be the, the age group is 30, and that's on the young side. But the but 23 years, that's that's tough. 30, 35. And you would have to know who you are as a woman. 50. Yeah, I, I I think that's about right. And, and and if you're and if you're fifty, yeah, if you're if you're fifty, if you're fifty to sixty, you know who you are. You you know who you are to be able to stand next to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Max, minimum, 
anything younger than 30 is, is just, it's just stupid. It's just, I, <laughs> the, whole, the whole time is who's your daddy. I mean, it's just fucking, you know, it just, it just, it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just not, it's not cool, man. You, 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 at that age, you, you just, you just don't know your body. You just don't, you just don't know enough. And, and you know, it's funny when I say this, I know there's women out there will be like, you haven't been with me. Um, it's irrelevant. I'm telling you with almost, almost 99% certainty you have nothing to show me so just surrender and just bring your flesh and body and your wonderful life and your three holes and just fucking enjoy the ride <laughs> as arrogant and as fucked up as that sounds i could not be more serious anyway all right i'm serious That's my fucking email address i'm serious all right. <laughs> and don't motherfuck me and send that to goddamn fucking Pornhub. <laughs> what if you do? I'll just set a filter. So, you know what I mean? I don't give a shit. There's a way around everything. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we got this second girl. And this was this was uh this was last night. All right. This one hurt. This one did too, on a different level. And, and when I say hurt, I don't mean like it's not. There's parameters on hurt. You know, try not to try not to look at it like you know, crying a little baby. You know, try try, try to think of it more like a a, a worldview of hurt, society hurt. You know, because that's pretty much what it is. It uh, it is. All right. So last night. I'm sitting at this table right here, and I was there for about an hour, and I'm sitting here, and there was a girl here, and G3. The interesting thing about this table is I never talked to him, but this girl here faced me on purpose because, <laughs> this is how it goes, man. When they were here, here and here walking in, she made eye contact with me. And that's why she sat there. I just not interested. She was younger, probably, uh, she was probably, probably 30, probably 30 years old. I could tell that she thought she was better than she was. And I just, I'm not interested in competing with her cell phone, with her validation. I'm just not. And and if you saw, and when I show you the, the when I turn to ENIP, because I'm trying to show you the difference between who I am versus, you know, wh who I am when I do videos like this and you think I'm ENFP versus what real, the shadow function of INFJ looks like. And I'm going to show it to you because it's fucking horrific. You just wait till you see it. And I'm not holding back. I am being fucking me. I will not do that. Authenticity is too important to me. So there's a girl here, girl one and girl two. This one, girl two, is equal to married. Girl one, no ring. All right. Oh, something I noticed is is this is cut off. You didn't you didn't see that right there. So basically, what I was saying is there. I put three X's over here like this, like this. I'll do this. That was them, and and the girl saw me so. Um, oh yeah, it was, and, and I, and, and I, I can tell, and, and I could tell in this situation that, that, uh, they were there to, to see, uh, what the scene was and, um, yeah, maybe, maybe buy him drinks. I don't know. Anyway, it's just, like, it's just... <laughs> I'll be honest with you. The whole time I was looking at her, you know, and I would I would glance over it and, and I would make eye contact with her and, and I, I didn't smile or I just look at her, you know. And the, the funny thing is, is, I'm like, you would not know what to do with me in fucking bed if you're left. <laughs> and you would think 
you would think you're the fucking shit. And the whole time I would be going, oh my God, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you haven't learned a fucking thing in life and you've been fucked by jackhammers. But that's all that's happened to you. You just, just, can you just get out of my bed and go home? <laughs> that's the truth, man. Okay. <laughs> oh God, miserable. Okay. So this girl right here. All right. She must have looked at me. Uh, she must have looked at me. Oh, man. Ten times. And, and she was she was side on. This girl was looking this way. And that way, this girl was looking that way. Why? Well, that's easy. A woman's peripheral view. If you're a man, you don't know this. Okay, so like, say for example, uh, this is uh, the eyes. The eyes, right? I'll do two colors. What we got? And green. Well, green doesn't show up. We'll do this one. All right. Um, I, okay, women, when when you walk near me, I look at your eyes and I know exactly where you looked and I know that you're looking at me when you're not looking at me. <laughs> it is fucking unbelievable to watch. Okay, and here, and guys, let me help you with this. Okay, so this is the girl. Okay, oh no, this is the guy. When you look forward, gentlemen, this is your view. Test it sometime. See, look forward, and then see what you can see. I can see my finger here, and then I can't. Try that sometime. Then look at women and take your peripheral view and look at where they're looking. And this is the most incredible thing. A woman's peripheral view is here. And once you realize that, and once you understand that, when a woman walks by you and she's looking right there, that woman with this peripheral view, she can see your hair color, maybe your eye color, your shirt, shoes, hands, feet, possibly. Your overall build and she can sense through that little visible slice of peripheral view that extends further than men, everything about you. Fucking facts. Trust me on that. So this, this woman, when she's looking here, she can clearly fucking see me. All of me. All night long, for an hour, well, not like about an hour, whatever, I'm doing my thing. I'm on my phone. I look, you know, I'm by myself, whatever. So I watch her and her friend get up to leave. And I immediately start feeling bad. They had no drinks, nothing. And they waited for me. Well, she was, and, and, and I never made a move. I just, I, I, I felt... <laughs> So I felt bad. So they walk out and I get up and I go after they're, they, they're standing outside and I say, Hey, look, um, you know, it, it's tough in this atmosphere. I make up some silly fucking excuse because I don't want to tell them the truth to give them that depth of me right off the bat. I did it anyway. I can't help myself, but to really go in with depths of self. No, I'm not going to do that old obliterator. I did it anyway. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> turns out that this girl's been married for 26 years. 26. It, because of another story the same night, because there was another girl, <laughs> girl number three, who was with the bartender. Her, his girlfriend. So I was talking to the two of them throughout the night, and I waited to tell you that so you can understand. I got to gotta pattern this out for you. Because that's... Fucking that girl, horrific. Fucking horrific. 
So I talked to girl number one, girl number one's right there, girl number two right there. I don't introduce myself on purpose. Because I, why do I want to know your name? I don't want to give you my name. That's privileged fucking information. Turns out, the girl number two gets it out of me anyway. Because she goes, oh, well, you never introduced yourself. Oh, no, you never told, you never, <laughs> you never told us your name. I said, that was on purpose. <laughs> I said that. Or that was by design. Something fucking dickish. I didn't mean to. It just came out. It's like, I didn't, I didn't want you to know my name. Because I don't think you're, because <laughs> I don't think you're special enough. And you just fucking proved it. And how? Girl number two is married 26 years. Girl number one, uh, divorced or separated for three, three years. Girl number two, check this out. They don't know I know, but I know. Something happened in the night that girl number two, the married one, already decided that I wasn't right for her friend. Do you girls do that? <laughs> Because what these girls, these ladies do, did, not, did not know is that I read them as you're the dominant of the pair and you tell girl number one what to do because I could look in her eyes and tell she was interested in me. <laughs> but I'm glad nothing fucking happened because, because I wouldn't be dating her. I would be dating her, you fucking bitch. <laughs> oh my god so i i got saved i i did and the whole thing is 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 i don't know why i didn't want anything to do with them when they were sitting there but i just felt bad for her because she was beautiful she was she was they both were and i and i'm like and i'm like you're you're really pretty i i you know and have a happy, nice, happy, fucking healthy life. And I walk a shame. A hundred yards to my fucking car alone? No, it wasn't the walk of shame. It was, my God, does she, girl number one, even know what I'm walking? Does girl number one even realize that girl number two is a miserable fucking bitch of a woman and is jealous of you and God only knows what and through her malignant, narcissistic, bitch ass, fucking attitude just convinced you right in front of me that I'm not the right one <laughs> because she said well let me help you out there Marty she's in a committed relationship and I'm like you were married for 20 years both yeah you have two children you both have children we all have children that are in our 20s and you're already in a committed relationship, and you're a woman, the man you expected, the man you expected. But you have a man like me, call him, I think I can say that, standing in front of you, after you, I fuck me for an hour. There was one time where this girl turned around, this lady turned around so much that she basically she was side, she was basically side on, turned toward me and fucking stared at me. I could have counted till I could have counted till three. And there were other times where she did it where I could have counted to one to two. Easy. There is no doubt in my mind that this woman controlled this woman. And this woman decided for that woman. And it and maybe she did have someone. But she was on the market. But all these women are on the market. All of them. Interesting. Who's the problem here? That would be me. Not them. Not these women. These women are on a drug. And that drug is called validation. And that brings me to girl number three. <laughs> this, is, this is what I go through. This is my life. The bartender I met at another restaurant and uh, about four or five months ago, he remembered me, I remembered him. He says, hey, this is my girlfriend. 
oh my God, you know this fucking asshole? So I say, <laughs> I say that to her. I say, I'm just kidding. What's your name? Now, she's 20, she told me she was 26 years old. She was Italian. She was fucking banging. I mean, she really was. And, and uh, um, she just was, her eyebrows, she was just a naturally beautiful girl. And so I'm standing there talking to her, talking to him, and she was delightful. She really was. So I look, I look at her, and uh, I, you've been dating how long? Two years. And I said to her, I, I couldn't help myself. I was a dick. I was a dick. I feel bad. I said, you've been dating two years? You know, I'm talking close to her, you know. And I said, does he have any idea that you have men you're talking to in your phone and you don't even know why and you have an amazing guy right here and you know it and you love him but yet you can't get rid of that phone and you can't not have those men in your phone do you i said do you think he knows that <laughs> she goes she had this olive italian skin beautiful girl just absolutely fucking beautiful and she goes you're fucking white <laughs> I said, I said, I've taught him two things, taught him two things. And I, you just heard me tell him, I'm going to teach him a third thing, right? She goes, yeah. I said, where's his self-esteem? Where? He gets jealous, doesn't he? And she goes, yeah. And I said, he doesn't even know about your fucking phone, does he? She just looks at me fucking, I said, of course not. <laughs> so I... <laughs> So I motion over to him and he walks over and I talk to him and I say, God, two years you've been dating this girl. I said, my hat's off to you, man. That is amazing. I said, you're a beautiful girl and he's a great guy. I mean, a big, huge heart. And I look at him and I tell him, I say, look, I got to teach you one thing. I'll do it when I see you next time. And he laughs at me. And, I, and then he has to go make another drink, and he walks away. And I, I look at her, and I say to her, I don't even get her name. I said, I want you to know, I give you my word. I won't say anything. I said, you're a good person. You're a good girl. And you don't even know what you're doing. And don't worry about it. You, 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 your secret is safe with me. I give you my word. Don't even worry about it. Later on in the conversation, because I walked away and then came back, and he, oh yeah, he thought it was wise to tell me, do you want to know something, Marty? I said, what's that? He goes, do you know she's going to wait for me till, till I get off work, and she's waited till two in the morning? She has. She's actually waited while, in a car, outside, work, while you get done with your closing duties, and you, and you count your, 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 uh, your, your change and your money, and, and, and you leave work between 12 and 2, 2.33, she's waited for you? Yes. I said, you're worth it. I said, that's incredible. I said, and I look at her, he goes, that's awesome. You do that for him? And she's like, yeah. I said, that's awesome. He walks away. <laughs> I look at her and I go, why the fuck did he just tell me that? Something happened between what I said to you and just now. And that's why, isn't that right? And, he, and she smiled at me. And I'm like, why the fuck do I need to know that? I said, I already said, I already know what type of girl you are. All I'm commenting on directly to you is, what the fuck is going on with your phone? <laughs> so then, <laughs> in my infinite wisdom, I tell her, get your phone out. This was, this was scary. Get your phone out. I want to show you something. She gets her phone out. I go, go to YouTube. I said, I'm just going to show you who you're talking to. Go to search. Okay, you've seen those TikTok videos where the girl will be sitting next to the guy and her phone is right there and the guy will reach over and she grabs her phone real quick and he's just like, and he gets up and walks away. This girl was so frightened because the bartender was standing and th they've been together for two years. The bartender, her boyfriend was standing right in front of us, right there. And I'm like, get your phone, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you who you're talking to. She 
was so nervous to unlock her phone. And I'm, I'm dying inside. I'm not laughing. I'm crying inside. And it was at that very moment that I realized that it's a drug. It's a drug. And then when she can't spell my name right and I go to grab her phone and I can tell she's apprehensive. And I say to her, because I'm this, I'm, I'm close to her and I know he can't hear me. And I said, oh my God, are you freaking out on your phone? What the fuck is going on here right now? Pretty girl, I said that to her. And she's just like fucking, it was so flustered. And I said, don't worry. I said, don't worry, you're a good person. I promise you're a good person. Don't worry. Because at 53 years old, I just realized something. And it's what I said to her before I walked away. And I said, it was unbelievable. I said to her, do you think that it is too much to ask men, to ask him to surrender to the fact that he has to surrender and give his life to you, even though there's nothing he can do to ever give you enough validation to where you won't need it from your phone. I said, that is the new dating world, isn't it? As a man, he has to be okay with that phone because if he walks away, you still have the phone. You're not going to feel anything. You'll miss them, sure you will, yeah. But you're truly never going to feel the pain. I, I looked, I swear, this is a true fucking story. And I looked at her, I said, can you tell me I'm wrong? She goes, no. And, and I looked at her. And I said, it was such a nice pleasure to meet you. And it was at that moment I realized she was a good person. She was a good girl. And she loved that guy. She did. She cared about him. It was at that very moment that I realized it's a drug. And it's stronger than opiates. And here's why. This is the daily emotion of a woman. This is what you're dealing with, men. And you can't compete. You 
are fulfilling for every need. You're doing your job beautifully. Technology and the smartphone. Years ago, years ago, I'm 53 years old, but 20, 30, 40 years ago, these question marks went unanswered. And the woman had to build it up into you. And that's why she loved you. And that's why she never left. That's why she 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 never cheated. She she was it, w- it was just not there. But the but now she can get it times ten from the phone. She can fake who she is say what she wants, and there's a fresh supply coming at her all the time because all she has to do is give a guy her phone number. And through an attrition of men, either at work, whatever, and she can play the game of you potentially will get a piece of my pussy and never give it up. And she can satisfy all those highs and lows of her life with three to five men. And you'll never know. And here's the, here's the question. Are you the problem? No, you're not. Are women the problem? No. They're not. They're the same woman they've always been. Sure, society and women's liberation has has, has, has put it on steroids and made it worse. Yes, I'm not denying that. But I'm saying that if you were to remove that foundational piece of this puzzle of the deplorable actions of women and men in dating... That is at the foundation of it. That and all of this is my experience. In 36 to 48 hours, and I'm not shitting you. Women... If you want to be happy, get rid of your smartphone. Men, if you want to be happy, get used to your women talking to three to five guys because she's not going to give up the smartphone. And you better have a self-esteem to handle it which is what I told girl number three. Save this for last. I said, why is his self-esteem so low? She just looked at me. I said, what if he knew that you had men on your phone that you were talking to? But what if he truly knew that and he could handle it? And what if he knew that before you go to sleep, he's the one you love? Do you think he could handle that and be a man and live his life like that? Because that drug, that validation that you get from the smartphone that that brings your life to this level of emotion, this is what she's trying to get, stability in her feelings and emotions. Stability. That's what she's trying to get at. That's why she does it. That's why she needs it. It's a drug. <laughs> It's like heroin, crack, coke, ADHD drugs, methamphetamine. It's a drug. It's a it's a fucking drug. It's a 
Fucking drug. My answer to this problem is I have a Nokia flip phone and you can have as many men as you want in your phone. They're going to lie to me anyway. I don't give two fucks. What I don't know won't hurt me. But when you're with me, you will give me your best and you will never motherfucking tell me no. You will never tell me no. Do what you want with the phone. Have anything you want. But you'll treat me with the honor and the respect that I fucking deserve. And you will never fucking tell me no. And I'll never tell you no. Something tells me that no matter what relationship I'm in, at the end of the day, I'll be the last man standing. And I'll be the only one in the phone. Something tells me that's the end of my life. End of my road. What you like better? These videos are the GVROs. <laughs> See you in the next video.